guys, welcome back. I'm Prodigy from Kilo23. It is December 26th, the day after Christmas. Hope you guys had a great Christmas. Hope you spent it with your families. I hope you went and gave the charity. I hope you did a lot of great things, and I hope you got some great gifts. All around, I know mine was actually really good. I really enjoyed it. It was kind of cold out. <laughs> it's Washington. It's always cold out here. Aside from that, I'm back today with another airsoft gun review. Um, for all you guys that aren't lucky enough to get airsoft guns for Christmas, go give to charity. It's great. It makes you feel better about your day and yourself, and it makes other people feel better because they're receiving things from more lucky people. So, with that aside, today I've got the Echo One Knight's Armament SR-16 E3 Mod 2. This is a solid, awesome gun, and we're going to be checking this out today. This gun retails for about $215, give or take, depending on the website you buy it from. But is it worth it? You're getting a plastic body gun with a metal rail system for a little over $200. Not a lot of companies do that. And to top it off, you actually get a pretty nice gearbox. And we're going to be checking that portion out later in the video, in the second half, so stay tuned for that. Now before we actually talk about the gun, let's talk about everything it comes with. It is Knight's Armament License, so it's got the engraved trades, and I'll talk about that and I'll show it when we get there. But it does come with a number of other things. Of course, it comes with your Echo One warranty card. It's got actually the Knight's Armament logo on it, which is kind of cool. You got a little warranty on it, centered in, register it. Now, you get one 300 round high cap magazine. I still use high caps because I go through a lot of ammo. Um, I've got some gameplay footage here we can check out in a second after I get through all this where I go through a lot of ammo. And I think um, between the three games I used this in the other day, I probably put about 3,000 rounds through it, which uh, for me is a lot. I, I tend to conserve ammo sometimes. In this gun, I really wanted to hold the trigger down and just light people up constantly. So having another high cap in my collection is kind of nice. I also get a wall charger, which I'm sure if you're an experienced airsoft, you already have plenty of uh, nice high-end chargers. So wall chargers is kind of just something spare for you guys. If you're a new player, go read about wall chargers. Don't blow up your battery. You get a 9.6 volt nickel metal hydride battery with it. Uh, it's to get you going. Probably won't last a full day, but um, it'll make the gun shoot. So I'm not complaining there. You get your cleaning rod. Uh, I probably got about 50 of these so far, but every little one helps. And this one's long enough to clean the barrel, which is great. And you get a silica gel packet. These taste great. So uh, go put this on your turkey or your mashed potatoes. Or uh... Now, I did say I had a lot of fun with this thing on the field the other day, and I intend to take it out several more times. Here's some awesome gameplay footage I have with it. Got one in the tower straight ahead. Yep. Yeah, I got eyes in quite a few straight ahead. Nice, nice. Keep it up. Ooh, I got him. Barely got him. Alright, what'd you guys think? I had a lot, a lot of fun with this gun the other day. Uh, I ran this and I ran my, my DMR after that, and I honestly think I had more fun with this. Just because the range was fantastic on it, it was getting a pretty decent rate of fire with 11-1 LiPo, which is what I ran on it the whole day. And it was light enough to where I didn't have to worry about the weight. You think, okay, a 10 or 12 pound gun, after a little while, it gets kind of annoying to carry around. Uh, my DMR is not the heaviest thing, but it's not the lightest thing either. And this thing, with a metal rail and a plastic body, was just the perfect weight. It's not very heavy at all. And for smaller, newer players, it's going to be a really light gun. So it's, a, in that way, a fantastic gun. All right, let's start with the stock and kind of move our way forward from there. Now, the battery compartment is going to be your crane stock. Rubberized butt pad here. You press the little pins in and pull this little guy out. I found this actually very hard to get out. And your battery compartment's back here. 
It'll come with a mini type 2 connector, but I went ahead and put some a uh, Dean's connector on here. All my batteries are Dean's, so it's just a lot easier for me in the long run. Now, obviously your stock is retractable. I usually leave it at about the mid-length because that's very comfortable for me. That's where I leave my airsoft guns, my AR, and they never move from there. Metal buffer tube, um, unlike the Genesis series, you do get a nice metal buffer tube, which I really like. Uh, that was one of the small drawbacks I didn't like about the Genesis. Uh, moving up the gun a little bit, let's talk about the sights next, actually. These are kind of a cool aspect. You get flip up front and rear sights. The front is adjustable for elevation. It's this little knob here. And you can twist that and adjust the height on here, and it has a little uh, needle. And it's just kind of got the little flared out sides there, which is really nice. I like it. When you flip it down, it's actually got little contours where you can pull it up very, very quickly. And this can be removed. It's got a flathead screw on it. The rear one is adjustable for height. And I usually leave it about the lowest. I really don't have a reason to raise it at all. It's more of a real gun aspect than an airsoft one. And it does have windage adjustment, too. I found the windage adjustment was really, really, really tight when I got it. So fresh out of the factory, it was so far right that it was just it was locked against the side. So that's your factory setting. Oh well, I had to take actually um, some pliers and wrench it over because it was so tight. But I got it adjusted quite nicely. It's uh, as close as I can get it to <laughs> shooting center on an airsoft gun's accuracy. But having front and rear flip up metal sights on a uh, gun of this uh, price range is actually really nice. I did run a dot, dot sight on there, but I ended, ended up not using it. The spread on this gun was, um, you know, I was shooting a lot of targets about 180 plus feet out, and around there is this kind of maximum range, 180 to 200 feet or so. And once you're out there, uh, a dot sight with a, a bigger than a man-sized target grouping is kind of pointless. So I just, I kind of aimed down the barrel and shot from there. And the iron sights are just kind of a nice backup to that. Now you're probably thinking, okay, it's a Knight's Armament SR-16. It's got a lot of different functions on it. You've got your left and your right bolt catch and release. You've got an ambi selector. Uh, no, sorry guys. This one being, you know, the $200 price mark or so. These are all molded into the body. Now, I really wish, you know, it's not a big deal for me as far as the ambi selector because I'm a righty. Uh, AR-15 M4s, they work great for me. And by the way, this one stays in place pretty nicely. Good click. Uh, I was I was quite happy with that. I didn't have a problem. But for you guys that are lefties and you're like, okay, I want that selector switch on the right, you, you might be a little disappointed. But I, I never have an issue with it personally. Um, I do wish it could move, actually. Even if it was just um, metal and wasn't attached to the left selector and moved with it, just having a movable metal, even plastic selector, would just kind of be a nice aesthetic touch. But it still works. I'm quite happy with it. Uh, so I don't really have anything compl to uh, complain about, but uh, it's molded into the body, so to each his own. And that's kind of the same thing with the uh, the bolt release on the right side and the mag release on the left side. They're molded into the body, they don't move at all, so you still have to use the standard uh, right side mag catch here, and the, well, obviously the fake bolt catch doesn't work, so it doesn't work yet, no matter what. Now let's just talk about the body for a second here. Now I know it's a plastic body and a lot of you guys might be disappointed by things that are just simply non-functional, but it's solid. What do I have to complain about? It's a very solid receiver. It may not be metal, so you may not get the most realistic feel out of it, but it doesn't wobble at all. There is no wobble. I'm serious. There's no flex at all. It's solid as it gets, and I'm quite happy with that. From a distance, it looks metal. It, it looks great. It actually feels pretty good. It's got some really nice fine texturing on it that makes it feel like uh, a real gun. Obviously, once you tap on it, you know it's plastic, but oh well. I'm quite happy with that. And to be honest, if I drop this thing, it's probably going to be more flexible than metal body. Metal body is going to fracture. Plastic one's going to flex, and it'll probably be okay. Now, one thing I wish Echo One had done actually was, obviously, when you pull the charging handle here. Uh, you can get your hop up adjustment here. And when you open your dust cover here, dust cover's plastic. It's probably got a, it's kind of got a little weak spring behind it. That's a little disappointing. I might swap it out for a more powerful one later. Uh, but there's no fake bolt here. And I know a lot of companies do that. But uh, I can actually look in here and see there's a decent amount of room for a fake bolt. And with some modification and sanding, you probably could fit one in there. I haven't tried it yet, but I feel like just um, Echo One could have done a little bit more on that point to give us a little more realism with the plastic body. Now, on the plastic body, you do get molded in Knight's Armament logos, and I really like the look of these. They just bring out a little more uh, realism, kind of, and just the fact that it's licensed is really, really nice. 
Now, with that out of the way, you do have your hop-up adjustment under here. Pushing the dial forward like all the other M4s is going to turn the hop-up on, and pulling it back is going to turn it off. Now, you guys are probably thinking, okay, the coolest part about this is the rail. And I have to agree, uh, getting a metal free float rail on here that's really long like this, it's about 13 inches, is really nice. And not having to drop an extra $100 for a Mad Bull one or something similar is another plus there. Getting this out of the box, installed, ready to go, I really, really like it. Uh, you know, plain M4s, you got to go buy a rail system and maybe a different barrel or something, and you got to buy the flip up sights, and that's going to cost you another $150 easily. But this, you, you get them. So if this is what you're shooting for, this is a great package price right out of the box. And it's got key mod holes all over it. All over the top, you've got your long monolithic rail on top here. So if you want to get a really long uh, sight on here of some kind, you can. It's very easy. And to add on to that, you actually get some rails on your left, right, and bottom here. Uh, the ones on the right and the left are about an inch and a half, two inches long. The one on the bottom is closer to like three, three and a half inches. So you can put like a vertical grip, uh, an angled four grip. Um, you know, if you really want a bipod or something stupid looking like a grenade launcher. Uh, but that's that's definitely an option. I really really like this aspect of the gun uh, But you do get the plastic flash lighter on here This is compatible with the mark one suppressor So if you want to get that from echo one and pop it on here, it looks really really cool I'd love to grab one of those in the future and just pop it on But you do get 14 millimeter negative threading under this just in case you want to add a different suppressor or flash lighter in the long term All right, we've talked about the externals here now we get to go dig into the gearbox and talk about all the cool stuff in here. And I feel like the gearbox and the barrel and the hop-up, they really make this gun. It's not just the rail system and the, the trademarks and everything. It's the internals that count a lot too, because this thing performed really, really well on the field. So let's go ahead and get it on the tech table and open it up. Now being an M4 style gun, this is going to run a standard M4 style chamber. Hop-up chamber is going to have your adjustment dial here. You can see it rocks a little bit, but it actually stays pretty in place and solid. It's not gonna just move around randomly when you're shooting. I didn't have any issues with hop-up de-adjusting or anything like that using this on the field whatsoever. Big plus about the hop-up chamber. Now this I think really makes the gun as far as the range and accuracy and just how it shoots is the Mad Bull Orange Bucking. I've had this in a lot of guns. It comes in most of the Echo 1 guns if not all of them now and they are fantastic. They really give you that precision accuracy and the fantastic range you really need that sets apart a lot of Echo 1 guns from just a basic gun. I was hitting guys 180 feet with two fives, no problem running this. And lastly, you do get a brass barrel. It is a standard length of an M4, 363 millimeters. It's a 6.06 .06 bore, so it's a little bit tighter than your standard bore, which helps a little bit from what I see. And you do get pretty decent crowning on the end. Now, since we have the gearbox and the motor out, let's go ahead and check out the motor first. This is a D hole pinion. It's pretty standard for a lot of guns from Echo 1 and similar brands. It also has the Echo 1 sticker. And there's not a whole lot of torque in the motor, but it was getting a so so rate of fire, and it's got a fairly heavy spring in it for a stock gun. A couple of things I will mention about the gearbox that I actually really do like right off the bat. A, it's actually got a trough here. You can look at your wiring, and it'll have more room actually for putting this wiring under here so you don't rip it when you pull your pinion gear out. And this, you can actually push. to kind of decycle your gearbox there so it's kind of a little hole to your anti-reversal latch. All your screws are going to have a little bit of Loctite on them so they're not going to back out very easily either. All right with the last gearbox screw out uh, I usually recommend putting something in the spring guide to hold it down. Pop it open. Release your spring tension. We can check out the gearbox here. Now before we get too in depth here, I'm actually going to clean all these uh, parts off before I look at them in depth here. Um, you can see there is a decent amount of grease on the gearbox. The piston's well lubricated. There's a little bit of lubricant on the tapper plate which is good. Gears have a decent amount on them. There's not tons and tons and tons like it's caked on like I've seen before, but uh, there's a decent amount of grease there that's uh, getting the job done well enough. Now something you probably noticed even before we opened up the gearbox is that these actually have 8mm bushings. Not bearings, solid steel bushings. And these will actually have the crosses in them. These are supposed to store and distribute grease along the axles over time. Something else pretty obvious about this gearbox is that the front is actually pretty beefy and reinforced here. 
Now, this is something new that Echo One's been working with, and I actually really like it. From what I've seen, it's very solid, and you can run pretty heavy springs on these for long periods of time without really having any issues. You can still radius the front here if you want, and put a sorbo pad if you want for extra durability, but just as is stock, this is going to work out pretty well. Now, as a result, the tappet plate here does have a couple of grooves cut in it. Uh, for some reason, over time, your tappet plate does snap or break or something like that. It's not very difficult at all to modify another tappet plate. You just need a file or a Dremel, and it's really very simple. Now, this spring, it's about an M115 or M120 spring. We're getting right around 400 feet per second with it. And our spring guide here is metal, it has bearings, and it's actually a version 3 guide. I've noticed uh, this is pretty popular too in a lot of recent guns that Echo One and similar companies, companies have come out with. They're using uh, version 2 gearboxes that have been slightly modified to take version 3 spring guides. Our compression assembly here is not too, too different. Standard plastic nozzle, nozzle M4 for the version 2 gearbox. Cylinder head has a rubber damper on the back, one O-ring. Piston is pretty standard. Concave ported front that you've seen a lot before. Standard nylon piston, one uh, no tooth removed or anything like that. Uh, zero port pistons. This is a Type Zero piston, and it's you know if you have an M16 barrel, it'll accommodate up to that pretty nicely. Something I wasn't super thrilled about was the fact that the cylinder head actually doesn't fit into the cylinder super well. Um, you can either upgrade it and get a metal one, which it'll last longer over time. Or you can actually just put some Teflon tape in there, which is probably what I'll do when I put this back together. Now our gears and our shimming and all this good stuff. Standard steel gears, nothing too special about them. Bevel, spur, sector. The shimming on it is what I like to call just like stock out of the box shimming. You get one shim on the top and bottom of each gear and they're all about 0.2 or 0.25 millimeters. So they're nothing too, uh, too fancy by any means. Now there's quite a bit of play in each gear uh, to be totally honest, but it's not unreasonable. And no matter what angle you hold the gearbox, it actually sounds pretty decent. So I can't really complain there. It's going to work for a while, and being steel gears not running too hot of a spring, it's, it's decently durable. Uh, but definitely you could use a little bit of shimming refinement if you really wanted to. Now our trigger assembly here, standard version 2 trigger, gets a decent meshing with the trigger shuttle and trigger contacts there. I was running an 11.1 volt LiPo on all the gameplay footage I showed before this, and it was getting a Good rate of fire, pretty consistent trigger meshing and contact in there, so I'm pretty satisfied with that. Now this is something I kind of mentioned before we open the gearbox here, but I open it up now and actually see the what's going on here. There's a little trough there for the wiring, but it's actually got kind of a clip here where the wiring sits, so it actually sits under that, so when you remove and insert your, your motor, your pinion gear, and it meshes with this, it can't rip this. That is a fantastic design, I really like it. Alright, we checked out the externals, the internals, and we've seen some gameplay footage. And just from my personal experience, this gun performed extremely well in the field. I, I took it out, I ran an 11.1 on it, I didn't even open it up to tune or anything, I just ran it all day, and it worked really, really, really well. I was hitting guys over 100, uh, 180 feet away easily. I was running two fives in it, I had an 11.1 in it, and it was just no problem. I could get out there and reach out and touch people without an issue. And for me, that's a big thing. When you get an airsoft gun that only shoots 120 or 130 feet stock, it's kind of like you're at such a huge disadvantage. You're shooting against guys with polar stars and DMRs and high rate of fire guns out there. And when you got something like that, you don't feel like you have a chance. But I'm an experienced player. I've been playing airsoft for quite a while. And, you know, I've run DMRs. I've run high rate of fire guns. They're a lot of fun. But I felt like using this, I actually had a fighting chance against guys that had ridiculous thousand plus dollar guns. Uh, when you get that out of the box with the gun, it's really something special. And I really enjoyed using this gun. Uh, obviously, I'm probably going to do maybe a couple of different internal things to it. I might put some different, uh, different piston head and piston or something basic like that in there. Uh, but the hop-up assembly, I'm really pleased with. You know, In time, I might upgrade some parts in there. But stock, it performed really well really well and I'm quite happy with it um, you know just some other things I'll touch on the weight like I said earlier was really light I didn't have a problem carrying this around all day whatsoever it does have the versatility so if you want to add uh, different rails to it uh, like just a flashlight laser grip you can do that right out of the box without having to buy anything extra these rails can obviously be moved around at different segments on the key mods uh, areas here and you've got a long monolithic rail so you can really add anything you want to this out of the box You've got a crane stock here to fit a huge array of batteries. Um, I just ran 11-1 stick in there, and it ran 
quite fine all day without an issue. Um, a couple of things I will note. Uh, we we show I showed this in the beginning of the video, the rate of fire on 11.1 and a 7.4. 11.1 rate of fire was good. It's about what you'd expect on uh, like running a 9.6 or something a little more like a 10.8. But the 7.4 rate of fire was kind of low. And I think, you know, it's a stock motor. What do you expect? It's, uh, you can always throw a new motor in there and get this thing shooting a lot faster. Um, obviously, I get to give this a grade, and I'm going to give it like a 9.5. Uh, there's just some small things that I don't like about it, but it's so minor compared to how the gun looks and feels and performs that it, they really don't matter. So I'm giving it a 9.5 out of 10, guys. This is a fantastic gun for the money. I hope you guys go to your local store and see if they have one, because if they do, grab it. You won't be disappointed. Uh, if they don't have it, tell them to go get one, because a lot of local stores for the price should be carrying this. I can tell it's going to be a very popular gun for field games. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Prodigy from Kilo23. If you want, go check out my Facebook page. I got a link down in the description here. I'm going to have a lot of cool pictures up of this. Uh, Echo One has been very kind to post some pictures, so that's really cool. You can go check them out, too. Um, but <laughs> this thing rocks. I'm really happy with it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Prodigy from Kilo23. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to get some more gameplay footage up with it really soon, where I show the, uh, a lot of the gameplay footage that I got. What I showed in this video was just a snippet, so go check that out and you get a lot more footage with it. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you have a great new year and take it easy.